Hello, my name is Anthony Willer and I'm an Applications Engineer with Go Engineer. In this video, I want to take a look at different ways of manipulating spline geometry. I have an existing sketch with a couple construction lines set up just for the purpose of adding relationships and dimensions too. Accessing the spline pull down list, there's a couple options. The spline tool creates a B spline and the style spline tool creates a Bezier curve. Starting off with the spline tool, how this works is I click point to point to point and so forth to create the spline geometry. To terminate the spline, I can either double left click the last endpoint or place it and select the escape key. What I like to do next is right click on the spline and select the option for show curvature combs. Within here I can adjust the curvature scale as well as the density if needed to adjust the resulting curvature display. With the curvature combs displayed, now I can go ahead and start manipulating the spline geometry. What I like to do is next right click on the spline and select the option for display control polygon. This will add additional drag points that I can manipulate to control the curvature of the resulting spline as well as the position of the spline points. You can see with the curvature cones displayed, I can get a nice look at the change in curvature based on the manipulation. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. And I just want to talk about some additional ways we can adjust the behavior of the spline. One, I can go ahead and start adding dimensions between the individual spline points and some other pieces of geometry. I can also add dimensions between the individual spline points. Lastly, after I add some dimensions to place the points, what I like to do is, if needed, adjust what they refer to as the spline handles. So selecting a spline, what I'll see is a number of faint gray handles that appear. They're gray because these handles are not active. To activate a spline handle, I select one of the drag points and I move my cursor to activate it. So there's three options here. There's a diamond, which controls the tangency angle. There's the arrow, which controls the tangency length. And the end point controls both in a single drag operation. Let's say I need to add some additional points for the manipulation purposes. So as an example, maybe I want to add an additional point at the bottom side of the spline. So if I right click on the spline, I have an option for insert spline point, and I can go ahead and select somewhere about the spline to place that point. Keep in mind that the point cannot be moved further along the curve after the initial insertion. And now at this point, I can go ahead and activate its spline handle and go through some fine tuning. Let's say I didn't need this point anymore. I could right click on it and I have the option for delete. Go back to uh, how it was, or revert the spline to its last state. So after making some manipulation here, if I decide that I want to reset the spline handle back to its initial orientation, I can either select the spline handle itself and on the left click reset this handle or select the spline and have the option there for reset all handles. Lastly what I want to talk about in terms of spline handle manipulation is that you have the ability of adding relationships and also dimensions to control the angle and length of each individual spline handle. So as an example if I wake up this spline handle I can go ahead and activate the Smart Dimension tool. I can add a dimension between the spline handle itself and some other piece of geometry to create an angle dimension. Now if I need, need to update the uh, angle, simply modify the dimension and key in a different value. With the dimension tool still active, if I select the spline handle again, I can control the length of that spline handle. After adding the angle and length dimension, now the handle is black. I cannot manually drag uh, to reposition the handle. 
Looking at the curvature on display, I can clearly see where there's going to be an inflection or change in curvature along the spline. If I want to have an indicator to show me that, I can right click on the spline and there's an option here for show inflection points. I didn't talk about all the individual manipulation tools, but hopefully from the, uh, the different things I've talked about, you have a better understanding of how to control a B-spline sketch entity. Next thing I want to talk about here is the style spline tool. So again, the style spline tool creates a Bezier curve. I do have the option to create a Bezier curve with a higher degree, essentially a smoother curve if I choose to. So how this tool works is essentially you select the first endpoint to uh, control the end of the spline or position the end of the spline. And then additional selections insert what they refer to as control vertices, not spline points as with the B spline tool. To terminate the spline, again, I could double left click my last point or select uh, or add the point and hit escape. So again, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the curvature comb display. And what's nice here is that you get a nice smooth uh, result. So that's the purpose of why Solvers came out with the Bezier curve to give industrial designers or mechanical designers a better resulting shape or a smoother shape. You have a bit less control as compared to the B spline tool, but you always have a nice curvature uh, at the end result. So again, you can see I can just go ahead and drag these points around, but I can do more than that. I can add relationships and also dimensions to these points as well as to the construction lines. So as an example, let's say I want to add a perpendicular relationship between these two lines. Just select both lines add and select the appropriate relationship. I can also add dimensions to control the length of the individual construction lines. I can also add dimensions between a point and some other piece of geometry to control its position. I could also add relationship or sketch dimensions between the individual construction lines as an example. I want to add a 60 degree angle between those two lines. And I could also add dimensions between the individual control vertices. Let's say I needed some additional shape control somewhere along the style spline. So very similar to the B spline tool where I can insert an additional spline point, what I can do here is insert an additional control vertex. So to do that, it's going to hover over one of the construction lines, right click, and I have the option there for insert control vertex. Now it's a matter of just positioning your cursor about one of the construction lines and adding in an additional point. Now I could manipulate the orientation of that point and add dimensions and so forth to control its position. Again, my name is Anthony Willer. I'm an application engineer with Go Engineer, and thank you for watching this video.